mulch. Let's talk mulch because it's about time to start doing it, right? Well, it is. It's okay. time to start thinking about it. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is what mulch does for you okay. and sure. the bad things about it. Okay. okay. Uh, the first thing it does is, and, and most people want, it's decorative, plus it helps keep weeds down. Sure. That's the number one thing. But it also causes weeds in some cases. Hmm. You know, and many times I get calls from people who have just gotten bulk mulch and they say, they brought me nut grass. <laughs> well, they, they really didn't, okay? okay right. <laughs> some weed seed needs sun to germinate, sure. some doesn't. The ones that need the sun, if you cover them with mulch, obviously they're not gonna come up or they're obviously. not able to push their way through the right. mulch. But things like nut grass, they need to be covered. <clears throat> There's not grass seed everywhere. And so the first time you cover it with mulch, it comes up like hair on a cat's back, you know, <laughs> and the mulch company gets blamed. But the fact is the vast majority of the seed was already there. Sure. Okay. Sure. All right. All right. Make sense. <clears throat> the other thing it does, it helps retain moisture mm -hmm. and it helps moderate our soil temperature. Here, we live in an area we call the transition zone where our soil freezes and thaws quite often. And that's really not good for plants that don't like that. And, and so many plants that we grow here are not native to that type of uh, soil. Things like hydrangeas, okay. you know, if it warms up early, the buds swell, you have issues with it. So mm -hmm. by having mulch, it helps keep that from changing temperatures quite as rapidly. Okay. okay? That's so that's the good things. The other bad thing is that when you put mulch down, you think in a year, well, it's gone, I need to do it again. <laughs> right. Well, it's not gone, right. it's still there, but it's decomposed into mulch dust, okay? <laughs> okay? And if you keep adding it year over year, you get this very fine particle material that will actually slow the, the, the drying and, and slow your air movement through to your soil. And you'll see things like azaleas begin to suffer. The leaves will get smaller. They'll mimic an iron deficiency okay. because they're staying too wet, which locks up the iron and so the plants can't get it. So you get these issues by covering them and, and letting that stuff continue to decompose year after year. So when you wow. feel that wow. need to mulch, get it all out. Get it out. Rake okay. it down to the ground, save that, put it in your compost pile, use it to plant with. It's good organic matter. You just don't want that really fine particles mm -hmm building up on top of your soil. Oh, that's good stuff. <coughs> All right, let's talk about the types. Okay. The right. first ones we want to talk about are the ones that are typically free. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, For leaves sure. yeah. and uh, pine needles. Okay. okay. All right. Are they acidic? The fact is, no, they're absolutely not. That's another one of those wives yeah, or garden myths that right. out there, okay? When pine needles fall from the tree, there is a little bit of acidity, but within just a few weeks, that's gone. Huh. With oak leaves, they're a little more acidic, but your soil pH is extremely stable. It's hard to change that pH. You can put six inches oak leaves on there and it isn't gonna phase it, uh, okay? Because okay. it's such a little impact. So, and very shortly, you're gonna see the pH rise anyway. We found that when we add oak leaves to a compost pile, over about 45 days, we see the pH actually rise. So, don't worry about it. You got them, use them, you, okay? okay. Nice. Now, the downside of using, letting the leaves fall and continue to lay there, we see voles get up underneath that a lot and use that as a run. So it's better if you can chop them up into little pieces like this okay. and just put a half an inch to an inch or so, makes a good mulch. Okay. Okay. So you can chop those up with the lawnmower or something? <coughs> yeah, in fact, I just bought a blower that inhales it and chops them up oh, nice. and puts them in a trash can. Nice. If I can get yeah. that thing to spread them, I'm diving head on. <laughs> it's great. All right. All right. The switch. <laughs> yeah. Just okay. blow them back out. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some of the ones you're gonna find if you go to your garden centers, okay? okay? These two are pine. Uh, this first one over here is what we used to call pine mulch. Now they call it nuggets, okay? okay. The nuggets we used to sell were two and three inches across, <laughs> yeah, but you just don't see that much right. anymore. <laughs> so this is what you're gonna get if you buy a bag of pine. This is what's called shredded mm -hmm. pine. And shredded pine's a little better because it uh, mats down. It, it doesn't float as bad as these do if you have a wash issue, okay? okay? Now, it's loaded with, guess what, lime. Okay, it will actually raise your pH some. So that's the reason for years we've told people, if you're gonna use pine, use it to plant with, use hardwood on top. Ah, uh huh. So ah, it actually okay. can change plant your pH with. a little bit. Okay. So, but it's inexpensive, easy to come by, you know, it's, it's, a good, it's a good mulch. It's better than nothing anyway. Better than nothing. Okay, okay, this is what they sell here locally as hardwood mulch, yes. okay? Hardwood mulch is basically everything that landscapers have brought into the mulch yards and they have smashed up with a hammer 
and then put into a bag and sell it to you, okay? Uh, <laughs> there's no telling what kind of stuff is in here. Yeah. There's wood as well as uh, bark, so you've got cellulose in there, okay. and then people think, well, I'll get termites in. Yeah, I was gonna well, ask you about that. The yeah. fact is we seldom see termites okay. actually get into mulch. Where we see it is if they let mulch get up against either wood that's used as a border or uh, siding on a house that stays wet, then we see the termites get into that because gotcha. it's covered but we actually don't see them get into this very often. Okay, gotcha. okay. So hardwood is a good one. This is what, you know, if you order from a bulk company, you're gonna get one that's real stringy, a lot more like this. And that's because they've run it through a hammer mill two or three times. Okay. And it's just, all it is is just the local um, trees and stuff that, that landscapers or the city has brought them and they chop them up. So that's, that's Let me what ask you is. this though. Yeah. Cause somebody actually posed this question to me. So what if somebody has diseased trees? That's an issue. Crepe myrtle bark scale on their crepe myrtles and they drug it out in the Well, that's possible. The city picks it yeah. up and. Now they typically compost this okay. stuff, okay? Yeah. So they're running water through it constantly to turn it, to get it to age as quickly as possible. But things like many, many uh, diseases in a compost pile at, at 150 degrees, they're not going to be destroyed. So there is that possibility that you could get it, but you know, it's minimal, really. Okay. The main thing we see with the bulk hardwood is it's not ready yet. If you'll see some like uh, where it's been laid down, if it smells like whiskey barrels, <laughs> or if it, um, you see water run out of it that's brown, that's tannic acid. That's uh, not old enough, and it will plummet your pH get it down to where when you plant pansies in it, they'll bleach out almost and wow. turn white. Okay. Okay. So you wanna make sure that it's good and done, you okay. know, <laughs> which typically takes at least six months for it to age to get wow. there. Okay, okay? Stuff. Right. this one right here <clears throat> is cedar mulch. Mm. Okay, this one, they say it's got some insect propellant I've qualities, but you know, I, I don't believe it because it doesn't smell, you know, like, Cedar, you know, of course, what we sell as cedar really isn't a cedar, it's juniper, but that's, you know, the red cedar around here is just yeah. Juniperus virginiana, which is, okay. it's not a true cedar. Um, okay. So, in, if you brought real cedar in, most of that's on the West Coast, you couldn't afford it, you know, by the time <laughs> you bag it and get it over here. So, anyway, but cedar's a good mulch. It, it lasts longer than either one of these, okay? So, it is a, and it's a good bit more pricey. Okay. So, you know, that's good. The cypress, and this, the, you'll see one around here called cypress blend, and that's this one. Uh, this is what I use in most of my beds. Okay. Uh, it lasts a good long time, uh, and it matures to a real pretty gray color. So it's, again, a little more pricey, but it's an excellent mulch. Right. Now, you've got sometimes where mulch is not practical. Um, <clears throat> you get to some areas of the country where you have something called artillery fungus. <laughs> where <clears throat> the fungus grows in the mulch and when it releases its packet of spores, it throws it up on the house and it's like super glue. You can't get that stuff off. So instead of using organic matter, we use rock in places like that. Okay. And this makes a good one. You know, how many houses have you been by where you see where there's no shrubs and the house is a brown up about this far from splash? So if you'll take landscape fabric and put down and put this on top of it, you'll eliminate that brown there okay. and make a better looking house, okay. okay? And then that's the two other things we wanna talk All about right, is landscape fabric versus plastic. Okay. All right, if you're using plastic, it really should only be used in a vegetable garden where you're going to uh, amend that soil basically every year, okay. okay? It gets very hot under there, which helps the microbes and gets the soil warmer sooner keeps the weeds down. But if you left it there year after year, your soil would sour underneath there and you wouldn't be able to grow, okay? So if you're taking it up each year, tilling it, putting it, adding lime if you need to, um, and putting organic matter in there, covering it back up, it will do a, a good job for you, okay? You just don't want to leave it there all the time. Okay. okay. Don't use it in flower beds no. or any place like that where you've got to have good air movement year after year after year. That's where you want to use landscape fabric, okay? okay? You get good air movement through it. Most weed seed won't come through it. Doesn't stop Bermuda from encroaching on it, right. but we have chemicals for that uh, to get rid of it. But it is, it's very good at keeping the maintenance down in a bed. Now the one downside is if you're like me and you're planting stuff all the time, you got to cut little oh, X's okay. in it, fold right. it back, fix the soil right there and plant it back. So it can be a little more 
work. But if you're one of those who just minimal garden work, don't want to do a whole lot of stuff, make your life a lot easier. What about newspaper? You know, a lot of people like to put down newspaper and things like that in their vegetable gardens. Well, you know, to me, it's um, it does work. work. It helps hold moisture. Yeah. It just not the most attractive thing sure. that I've ever seen, you know. <laughs> and that's part of why I garden. I enjoy the beauty of it. You know, I don't go out there to read the comics. Right. Good stuff, man. Hey, thank you very Good much. Stuff. We appreciate that, Mr. Jeff. I love yeah. mulching dirt. I, we see. We see. <laughs> we can tell. Thank you much. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.